Once upon a time, in a dream house filled with cakes, Oneiroi lived happily with everyone. Greetings, everyone. In today's video, we'll be taking a look at the ever so sleepy dream shade Oneiroi. Turvy world to right. If you're new here, welcome to the channel. We release a complete guide for every new character making their debut on the global server. So if you would like to see more videos like this, a like rating would be greatly appreciated. We can all agree, Ether Gazer is a fairly underrated game. Liking videos like this one will help creators reach more potential admins and grow our community. Thank you. Dreamshade is a shadow support unit. She belongs to the Olympus faction of characters and uses energy as the resource to execute her skills. While her primary function will be that of a dedicated support for shadow teams, she can see some usage as a general support in other teams thanks to her ether codes and signature functor. Her basic attack has four sequences with no intrinsic effects, while her passive allows her to passively gain two energy every second. Her dodge skill will trigger a two-second time fracture, as well as granting her two nightmare and two sweet dream marks on cast. Skill 1, Eternal Slumber, simply deals AoE shadow damage to the enemies in front of her and grants one nightmare mark. For three seconds after casting the skill, it is changed into its variant form. Casting the variant form will consume 50 energy to create two simultaneous void explosions dealing AoE shadow damage to the surrounding foes. In addition, the damage dealt is increased by 1% for each remaining energy and grants one Nightmare Mark. Skill 2, Distant Daydream, opens multiple portals around the locked-on target before impaling them with several void projectiles and granting a sweet Dream Mark. For three seconds after casting the skill, its variant form becomes available. By consuming 50 energy, her summon appears to deal additional damage to the surrounding foes. In addition, she gains a number of attack stacks based on the number of sweet dream marks consumed. Each stack increases her attack by 1% and grants a sweet dream mark. Skill 3, Lucid Dream from Gates of Horn. Consume all nightmare points or all sweet dream points on cast. When nightmare marks are consumed, she gains 6 energy per Nightmare Mark. When Sweet Dream Marks are consumed, she gains the same amount of marks consumed as Nightmare Marks. In addition, she is granted 1 or 3 attack stacks, with each stack increasing her attack power by 1% for 12 seconds, stacking up to 20 times. Her ultimate, False Dream from the Gates of Ivory, allows her to enter the Ethereal Dream State. In this state, the entire team's shadow damage is increased by 50%, and skill 3 is replaced with the Awakening Moment skill, with its old function triggering automatically every 4 seconds. Upon reaching the energy cap in the state, all energy are automatically consumed to trigger the Dream Slumber buff for 7 seconds. While Slumber is active, dark elemental attacks dealt by the team reduce the enemy's shadow resistance by up to 25% for 15 seconds, and you deal an extra 30% of your attack power as dark attribute damage to said enemy. Casting skill 3 in this state will unleash a wide AoE attack at the surrounding foes. In addition, the damage dealt is increased by up to 150 times 20% of your attack power. This bar here indicates the damage's current threshold. While in a party with Hades, their ultimate skill chain, Dream Luminous, will reset Hades' Divine Grace meter to 50 every 3 seconds, increase the team's crit rate and crit damage by 12% for 12 seconds, and allow Oneroi to enter the ethereal dream state, or exit the state if she was in it. Lastly, when she or her teammates cast an ultimate, she gains 20% of her ultimate charge. At first glance, her kit may seem a bit confusing, but don't worry, this is one of those characters that's better left to the AI. Most of her support capabilities and a good portion of her personal damage are locked behind her ultimate, and mark management isn't really a big deal since she autocasts them while the ultimate is up. If you are manually controlling her, just remember, using skill 3 to consume the marks from skill 1 speeds up energy generation and consuming skill 2's marks grants a stacking attack buff as well as new marks for skill 1. 
Aside from consuming marks, Skill 3 doesn't do much outside of the ethereal dream state. While in that state, it does gain the ability to nuke the field, but keep in mind that casting it will also end the state, and your teammates will lose their strongest buff. Now that we have a better understanding of her kit, here is what a basic Oneroi rotation looks like. Keep in mind, manual control isn't really recommended for this unit, as her personal damage is rather lacking, but there is always going to be a few of you who wants to run your favourite unit, regardless of their power level. To that end, here is the general rundown for her combo. The combo is very simple. While not in her ultimate, we want to loop two, two, three, three, one, one, three. This will activate her stackable attack buffs, as well as generate the energy needed for our skills. Once her ultimate becomes available, we want to loop two, one, two, one. Make sure you avoid using the variant skills. Doing so will consume 50 energy, and in our ultimate, we want that energy to reach 100 to trigger the slumber buff. Make sure you do not cast a second ultimate if you are still in the ethereal dream state. It will just take you out of it, so exit it manually, then cast the ultimate. The AI will usually exit the dream state just as the next skill chain becomes available. This is a new section I will be covering moving forward, but for now, you can ignore the new skill upgrade system for all support characters, as the boost to skill level it provides does not work like it does for evolution particles on warps. The upgrade only affects a skill's damage output and doesn't enhance any additional effects the skill may provide, so those resources are best reserved for your DPS units. For Ether Codes, Three yellow is recommended for most players, especially if you have her signature functor. This will allow her to gain up to a 90% boost to attack when dream awakenings are triggered. When entering the ethereal dream state, her crit rate is decreased by 5% and the team's attack is increased by 40% for 15 seconds. 15 seconds after entering the ethereal dream state, her energy recharge is decreased by 80%. Furthermore, while in the ethereal dream state, if self or a teammate trigger a successful dodge, it will trigger the dream awakening skill. Free-to-play players can try to make her work as a general support using three red. This will allow her to grant her team up to 10% crit rate and a 10% crit damage when she consumes sweet dream and nightmare points respectively. Yellow already give a team wide 40% attack, so unless your non-dark team really needs the extra crit stats, it's best left alone. For Functors, Herald Hydra is a serviceable option. The Functor itself, apart from being a good stat stick, won't do much for her, but it will allow her teammates to tap into absolute zero warps thanks to its two-second zero time extension. Her signature Functor Herald Arian requires a 100% crit rate in order to take full advantage of its bonus. The Functor gives a 36% boost to crit rate at base, so to achieve the 100 needed, we can use Me Ninja to gain 10%. Our sigils can grant 47% with 8 crit rate enchants, and the skill chain with Hades will grant another 12% for a total of 105% crit rate. When she enters Ethereal Dream State, if her crit rate is at no less than 100, the team's crit damage is increased by 36%, 
The Dream Awakening hit count limit increases by 50 points. Each time Awakening is triggered, the added damage count is increased by 40 points per teammates. When Skill 3 is cast in her ultimate, the attack power increase will trigger additional counts based on the number of Dark Attribute teammates. Lastly, when the attack increase effect of Lucid Dream from Gates of Horn is triggered, it will trigger an additional number of times based on how many Dark modifiers are on the team. Needless to say, the Functor is a very useful pickup and will allow her to play as a general support on team outside of the Shadow Comps. If you have to make a choice between the Functor for Hades or the Functor for her, hers is definitely the one to go with. The new doorway to Dreams is going to be our best in slot pick for 1, 3 and 5. It will increase the entire team's shadow damage by 10% for 8 seconds on dark attack hit. When an enemy have their shadow resistance lowered, the entire team's shadow attacks have their crit rate increased by 8% for 12 seconds. For 2.4 and 6 song of the victor, will increase energy recharge rate by 20%. And for every skill or ultimate, not on cooldown energy recharge, is further increased by an additional 20%. If your energy is below 60, the energy recharge rate is increased to 70%. Lastly, for each skill or ultimate currently on cooldown, crit damage is increased by 7%. For every 50 energy consumed, the entire team's damage is increased by up to 10%. For enchantments, we want attack, crit rate, crit damage, and a couple loopbacks if possible. Warps gives you the freedom to personalize your characters in a way that best fits your playstyle. As such, the ones I recommend may not be the best ones for you. But if you want my recommendations, they are as follows. For slots 1 and 2, we want 2 power-up ranged and 2 precision hub. Precision hub may seem like an odd choice, but remember, while in her ultimate, she will prioritize basic attacks to make sure she have enough energy to trigger slumber. For 3 and 4, we want 2 EM flux and 2 unfetters. For 5 and 6, we want 2 absolute zeros and two kinetic mods. As her skill chain partner Puppet Master Hades is going to be her best in slot teammate on release, characters like Ling Guang, Hera, Bastet, Heimdall, or Okuni can occupy the third slot for now. And of course, being a shadow support, you can run her in your Hell team or in your Anubis team. In future versions, she will occupy the third slot on the powerful Hades and Selene comp. This team can clear floor 8 of the new game mode, even while using all free-to-play gear. Since this is one of my shorter guide videos, I'll go ahead and give you guys my pull recommendation as a parting gift. If you have Hades, and you plan on getting Selene in the future, she is going to be a must-pull for you. If you have Hades and have to choose between Oneroi and Selene for her, the answer is Selene. If your strongest dark unit is Hell or Anubis, she will bring them in line with the standard roster of characters once they have their synergy upgrades. They won't be broken by any means, so do keep that in mind. Lastly, if getting her now would leave you low on funds for any future spending events like the one we're expecting with Thoth, I'd recommend holding off and trying to grab her on a rerun banner. Nagas,